everyone, Ozzy Mark here with another Fixed Blade Knife Review. And today we're looking at the K-Bar Johnson Adventure Piggyback Knife. As mentioned, this knife is manufactured by K-Bar and it's uh, designed by Johnson Adventure Blades. We've got one here and I just wanted to show you the, uh, the package that it came in. It's in a, a blister pack. This is not going to be an unboxing video or a de-blistering video or whatever you might call it, but I just wanted to show you the package it came in. I've got another one here that I uh, prepared earlier and it's already unpackaged, so I'll put this one off to one side. Now you may be wondering why have I got more than one. Uh, well, actually I've got three or four of them laying around and I'm only going to keep one, but I'm, I'm not going to say any more than that. Stay tuned. Right, so this is the knife. Now it comes in a little plastic sheaf and the retention on the sheaf is simply by this section down the bottom here where the knife slips in there's that section you can see cut out and it just presses in there's no real audible click or anything um, it's it seems quite solid I'm not sure that I'd want to be wearing this as a neck knife not that I'm a neck knife person but for in your pack or whatever it's it's perfectly fine it does have a little I guess you'd call it a loop it's a uh, rectangular kind of section there as it sits there now, without modification, you won't be able to get paracord through that. You can get um, gutted paracord cord through, so if you take the inner you know, strands out, you'll be able to get that through there, no problem. Um, you could possibly modify that maybe by um, taking a little bit out. Oops, sorry, I'm bumping the camera. It's very unprofessional. You could probably take a little bit, maybe, of that plastic away from in there, and you'd probably fit normal paracord through. I haven't tried that, but um, it's not really an issue, I don't think. Okay, so, as I say, retention seems good but I'm not sure I trust it in a in a neck knife configuration so I'll put the sheath down let's talk about the knife it is basically designed Johnson Venture knives say specifically for hunting field dressing that type of thing um, I don't actually do any of that myself but I don't doubt that it would work well it's, as you can see it's got a nice belly on the blade and some other features we'll talk about shortly I think it's also quite a decent little utility knife it'll certainly work as a backup to larger survival knives and we'll come back to that point later into some stats and things, the steel on this is 5CR13, which I know absolutely nothing about, um, except that it's obviously a Chinese steel, as evidenced by on the back there where you can see that it's in fact made in China. It is a clip point blade, as you can see there, and it's hollow ground. The uh, blade length on this one is 2 and 5 eighths of an inch, or 67 millimetres. The overall length on the knife 5 and 15 sixteenth of an inch, so it's just a touch under 6 inches, 150 millimetres in the metric system. It's a very lightweight knife, it only weighs in at 5.1 ounces, which is 31 grams. If you add the sheath in the equation, it's 1.4 ounces or 40 grams. Quality on it overall seems good, um, nothing to, uh, I can say it's not nicely cut out, it's, it's decently finished, um, it certainly came with a sharp edge on it. Speaking of which, we might as well do a, the dreaded cutting test. We'll start out with just the obligatory piece of paper, and as expected, it cuts nicely. If we bring the cutting board into play here and grab a piece of paracord from over here, we'll just give it a bit of a try on, on that, and no problem at all going through that actually. I'm not really in shot, sorry about that guys. Actually, that goes through that really very easily, no problem there at all. So it came sharp out of the box and I would not see any problem with sharpening this blade up and, and keeping that edge on it. As mentioned, hollow ground. Um, it's quite a shallow hollow grind. It comes down to a very fine edge there. And one of the interesting things on this knife is the jimping. We'll just talk about that. It's got um, jimping up the back here for your thumb. Yeah, sorry about that sort of scar on my thumb. I, I did cut myself. I didn't listen to Gavku's advice. And also, you'll notice further up the blade on there's some more jimping up here. Now this is obviously designed for when you're field dressing and capping you can put your thumb up on here or as you would have seen when I used it for cutting that paracord I mean I put my finger on there, my index finger like that and really very comfortable. I like that design on the back of the blade. It's it's great for, um, for getting up there and doing that detail type work. So the overall design I think is really good. Handle itself, small of course, you'll get the two, two fingers there, one finger here and it locks in quite reasonably but of course it is a relatively small knife, you, your back finger will kind of wrap around the back of it. Not a bad thing though. Quality as I said is good, value I think is really um, very very high indeed. This thing I picked up for $10, um, $10 US. Uh, for something like this I think you can't really go too far wrong. Now it's purpose of use I guess, um, I, as I say it could be used as a neck knife but with this sheath probably not ideal. Maybe if you're into custom sheath making you could do something with it. Um, but definitely as a 
camping knife, backup knife, just something lightweight. Certainly it's designed and I think the name's a giveaway, uh, much like the K-Bar Remora BK-13 knife. Um, piggyback knife sort of tells you that really it's designed to be paired up for a larger knife and probably a survival knife. Um, I've got a few survival knives here just to give you an idea of, of how it might fit into the sheaths they come with. If we look at the, um, what have we got here, the Buck Hoodlum. You can see the pocket on the Hoodlum, it's probably going to be just a touch long. Now you can extend that strap out and I have done that, it will fit into, I've already got a, a knife in there, I just pulled it out, that's the BK13 Remora that lives in that one. It will fit in there. As you see, all you need to do to get that to fit is to adjust that strap out, which it will do, and it'll slide it like that. So you can run that knife in your buck hoodlum if you wish to. So I'll keep that remora out. We might have a look at that in a moment and just compare it to this, this little knife that we were looking at. I've got a couple of Ontario knives here that we can have a look at, and it fits perfectly. Now, the first one's an RTAC 2, which I got just recently. Haven't done any work with it. No review yet. We'll get there. But it's got a pocket on the front, and this knife, if you're thinking of, of what knife you can run in, in this knife, fits perfectly. You can see there, it just tucks in really nice. And the other Ontario knife I've got here to show you, I'll just push the Artec out of the way, I'll fix that later, is another one I got just recently, it's the uh, SP50, which I'm really excited about trying that one, haven't got around to getting out in the bush for it yet. Pocket size is basically on those two sheaths exactly the same, so of course it will just um, fit in there identically. So if you're looking for a little piggyback knife to go with um, your RTAC 2, SP50 or any of the Ontarios that have that same length pocket, you could probably do a whole lot worse than going with one of these um, little Johnson Adventure piggybacks from K-Bar. I just, I said we'd put it alongside the little um, BK13 Remora, which is also a K-Bar product, and just to compare them for size, etc. I'll just zoom down here so you can see those a bit better. And the bottom knife, of course, is the BK13 top knife get it in shot there for you, is the piggyback. So you can see there's quite a difference in shape and size, but they're both really good knives, and um, yeah, take your pick. But they're great little things to have with your survival knife, don't take up a lot of room, no weight, as I say, for 1.1 ounce or whatever it was, you don't even know it's there, and it just gives you that detail capability. All right, well that's my review of, of that uh, particular knife, I won't uh, go on too much longer about it, hope you've all enjoyed that, and uh, Happy knife collecting and shopping. Take it easy, everyone. Bye for now.